Hey, okay, everybody. This video, this video came about from a video I did yesterday with Tyro from DCS Debrief. Uh, had one of my viewers, actually a couple of viewers, have asked me to uh, share a short video with me with you guys about what I use for my dead zone and curves for different jets, and because uh, they've noticed on quite a few of my AARs, it seems like it's pretty smooth. Um, so over time, uh, since I had the Flaming Clips 3 and I had to really get some dead zone and curves for the F-15 and the other jets in there, uh, I realized that every time I bought a new jet, I had to go and set dead, dead zone and curves based on the aircraft's performance. And those dead zone and curves are going to be different for every airplane, uh, especially difference between, you know, uh, Generation 4 fighters versus World War II tail dragger fighters. You're going to use different types of, uh, of numbers for the curves and the dead zone for those because of the type of aircraft they are and the type of maneuvers that you'd have to do uh, in a tail dragger versus a you know tricycle gear modern retractable fighter. However, uh, even though all the airplanes are different, some of the settings you'll notice will work for across the board. Like the F-18 and the F-16 are pretty close. Uh, the F-15 and the SU-27 are pretty close, but I'm going to go through some of my settings and show you what I've got. So um, first we're going to go ahead and connect. Uh, what I've done is I've already got, uh, already got my radar is, is in silent mode, and there's no radar in the HUD. I've got my ECM off. I've got my, I, uh, three to five minutes earlier, I opened my uh, refueling door. Uh, I've got ECM is off. Uh, I've got my strobe light off, so I don't blind the boom operator. And we're getting ready to move into the pre-contact. So I'm going to check my turn on the right, make sure everybody's there. Come on in. Normally, in the real world, you get pre cleared pre-contact from the uh, from the port side observation period uh, position over on the left. But uh, in DCS, you have to be slightly below. I tell people about 30 feet below and about 50 feet back gets it in there. Uh, one of the things you'll notice if you're in that position and you get uh, you don't get cleared contact and you get return pre-contact again, you may be have too fast of a closure rate. So you might want to check your closure rate next time if you uh, keep getting kicked off the boom because you're coming in too fast. So so right about there, I'm going to call them up. Ready, pre-contact. Cleared contact. All right, we're cleared in. I've already gone through my safety checks. My master arm is safe. Moving in, and I'm a little bit high, but I'm going to go ahead and move in, and I'll show you what we're looking for in the picture, and then we'll pause it, and after we get some gas, we'll pause it. So first thing we're going to do is fly to the boom, come up to it, and pause momentarily. I'm not using any speed brake or uh, any uh, flaps or anything like that. There he goes. He just raised the boom for me, so I'm going to pull in slightly on the left. Uh, if you guys get a chance, go watch Kite, Red Kite's uh, tutorial video on the F-16. It's really good. Uh, he does really good videos in my mind. I like him. He's also one of the featured sites on my website, on my YouTube page. So move up into the position. Now, if you look at that picture, let's pause it. Okay. On the left side of the aircraft, up front, is the director lights. And that is the down and up on the left side. If you look the closest letter to us, you can barely make that out, but it's a D. And then if you look in the front, the letter that's all the way to the front of the uh, green line is a U. And so if your light is moving to the U, that means you need to come up. If your light is moving uh, closer to the D and getting red, that means you go need to go down. And that's the director lights. It's telling you if you need to go forward or aft, up and down. The right side is the forward and aft lights. And right now you can see I'm right in the middle. And once you get that sight picture with your... Uh, with your view settings all set. I've got another video on that if you want to go over and check that out. Uh, it's about P, uh, POV or FOV, field of view, and your uh, zoom settings, how to set those up for each airplane. Uh, and I won't go through that now because I've already got a video on that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this picture. And now you can see for the each HUD is going to be different. If we had the F-15 or the F-18 right now, we'd have that canopy arch bow uh, between, between the windscreen and where the canopy clamshell comes down. Uh, this right here, the Viper's canopy goes all the way down in front of us. You know, we've got really beautiful, unrestricted view. Let's look back there and see. You're never supposed to do this when you're refueling. You're always supposed to keep your eye on forward. You get disoriented. And my wingman's over there. Look at him. He's got a high AOA over there a little bit. Tanker's going a little slow. Uh, when I worked in tankers in the Air Force, our tankers used to refuel at a, right at about 300 uh, knots indicated at 20,000 feet. So here we are at 24,000 feet, 
and we're we're on the boom. Let's go ahead and unpause it now, and we'll uh, we'll we'll see how long we can stay on it. You're taking fuel. So I was talking to Tyro about this last night in the debrief. Uh, typically, what a lot of new pilots will do is they will they'll come up and make an adjustments for a closure rate or for uh, altitude. And what they do is they wait until they get to the desired altitude to uh, to draw back their power or to engage the power if they're slowing down. And you want to anticipate that. You want to pull the power so that by the time you reach the desired altitude or desired airspeed, you're there. So, so right now we need to go down a little bit. See the arrow is pointing down and it's near the down thing. So we need to go down and we need to come back. We're, the red line is way too far forward. So let's come back. Contact. Another thing I've done too is I've you're put the, uh, in the DED, I've put the air refueling or the fuel bingo indicator there, which tells me uh, if I'm taking on gas. Right now you can see it ticking down slowly, 3581, 3580. I don't have it. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to come back, check him behind me. He's trying. He's a good boom operator. Something else that I uh, wanted to tell you about in F-16 Vol 3, if you've got a pilot that's brand new on the air refueling mission, brand new air refueling, first time, you're supposed to announce it to the boomer operator that's your first time. The reason you have to do that is because if you're a first time qualification pilot for air refueling, they're not allowed to have a first time training student in the boom operator's position. It's got to be a seasoned boomer operator certified and everything. So so this is not my first time, although it looks like it. I'm coming up. There we go. Pull into the position. There's what I want to hold right there. I want to hold. Let's see if we can get it back in there. I want to hold the green lines in the middle. This is one of those do as I say, not as I do type thing. There we go. We should get a contact here in a second. Contact. Hey, there we go. Once you get the lines lined up, it takes a while, and then the, the boom operator engages the uh, hydraulics that pushes the boom into your aircraft once you're stable. I remember some of the old uh, simulators on my Commodore 64, Ace Combat, or Advanced Combat Emulator, ACE. And uh, it would, the, the guy would say, stabilize, stabilize. We're still taking gas, so we'll push it up to about 6,000 pounds. Sorry, that was me a brain farting around with my... Uh, we got 1,000 pounds to go. That was me look, trying to scratch my nose, messing up my track IR, my face track, no IR. Let me know in the comments if somebody would like, if, if you're not using uh, head tracking, let me know if you'd like some help on setting up track IR and a little video on how I set that up and uh, how I had to play around with it for a little bit to get it perfect. But I love it. I've been using it for about four or five years now. Contact. My next move, I'll never go to track IR. I'll just go straight to VR when uh, next gen VR, you know, shows promise. Okay, 500 pounds to go on the offload. And we have taken 500, or we've taken about... Uh, 3,500 pounds of fuel. We're going to go ahead and cancel our disconnect. Wow, that was pretty close. That's one of the modeling things. I the boom operator would have raised that boom out of the way right there while I was pulling back. Abort rejoin. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up to the observation on the starboard side. Look at that traffic out there. It's really nice that ED put this free mission on. This is the uh, Caucasus mission that allows you to go and do AR right from the start point in the air with with the uh, F-16. So, And again, I'm just using the F-16 because ED has this really free mission out there that you can do, uh, single player. So I'm just going to do it in the F-16 mode. So let's go ahead and pause it here. All right. What you want to do is, if you're not familiar with your curves and your dead zones, which a lot of us are, uh, hit escape, adjust your controls, hit the drop down right here and you want to hit axis commands. Once you get to the axis commands, sl scroll down. And you're looking for joy Y. There's your pitch. It'll be aligned with whatever you have it slave to. I, I have I have the uh, Warthog Hotess and I have the joystick for the Warthog Hotess, which is the F-16 A-10 stick. And when, once you collect the, uh, select the field, the joy Y field, come down here to axis tune. And you can see that I have a dead zone of 3 and a curvature of 10. And if you're on 0 and 0, this is what it'll look like. Let's go to 0 right there. It's pretty linear. I can also, you can highlight it. Actually, you can't highlight it. Let's go there and then 
Some of the fields you can highlight and type in the number, but not on this one. So right there, that's what it you will show up with with default settings. And so what you'll do is you'll click on the little the little silver dot by the dead zone, click it, and hit your your right arrow key three times. One, two, three. Now this is what I've nailed, narrowed it down to. Uh, I when I actually start with a new airplane, I usually put the dead zone of about eight, and I put the curvature of about 25 or 20. And so uh, you, you want to start off with that, and then you feel it's going to be mushy, but you're going to get the feel of the jet. And then as you feel that your 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 competency with the jet and your skill with the jet goes up, then you can slowly reduce that dead zone and that curve. Uh, I, I don't have any airplanes that I fly with zero and zero. Everything I've got, I'll, I'll have to check the Huey, but uh, all of my fixed wing airplanes have a little bit of dead zone, a little bit of curve. So, uh, same thing for the curvature. Now, the curvature is is a is a reverse or or positive linear curve. Uh, so you can see if you go back and go negative, which I don't I don't see any reason why I would need negative. If I need negative, I would just do an, an inverted slider. So what you do is you come up and you uh, you're at zero. You select it, and I would move that up to at least 20. Try 25 at first, then go fly around a little bit. See how 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 much it is. You notice that the controls are a little sluggish, and everything. Now, what a dead zone does is a dead zone puts a little bit of a zone right in your neutral position of your flight controls, to where it's not active. And this is really handy if you're the type of person when you put your feet against your pedals, and let's say you hit one paddle before the other, and it's so sensitive that you can actually engage the rudder and not mean to. Uh, so you add a little dead zone to uh, to a flight control surface. It's less sensitive right in the middle point zone, and everything. So so we've got that. And then once you do once you have that, you hit OK. If you're going to check another another axis, like let's do the roll axis here, you'll see that one. And uh, actually, I don't want to do that. I want to click on it. I want to hit axis tune. And right there, you can see I still have dead zone three, curve of ten and nothing's inverted. I'm not using a personal slide or anything like that. And I hit OK. And then you come down here to the rudder. Axis tune. Now here's the one where I have dead zone of 4 and curvature of 20. And I may I may take that down. I'm going to take that down to 15 and try it out. So let's go down, hit click it, and hit left arrow five times and hit OK. And then to save that you have to hit OK again. And then we'll pitch out of here so we don't hit this guy. Let's go over here and get our own airspace. Everybody clear to the right. We are out of town. Thank you, Tanker. Cheers. All right. So now that was what I have for the F-16. Let's go in there and see if there's anything I missed. Uh, options. Axis commands on the F-16. F-16 sim. Uh, if you got the F-16 game in there or easy, uh, try it with the sim. Uh, I don't know anybody that's not capable of flying in the sim mode. It's way better experience to fly it as a sim, but to each his own. Do it the way you want. Uh, then scrolling down, I've got uh, on my wheel brakes, let me show you what I've got there, axis tune. Uh, I've got zero, zero, and zero inversion, zero slider, zero user curve. So, and then 100 on saturation X and Y. That's about standard linear and stuff. If you're having problems with it, I, we do have a couple guys that have controllers in our unit that uh, they didn't realize they were, one guy was flying around for a, a quite a long time and he said, well, I've got to fly around with my pedals depressed all the time. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, the, if, I, if I release them, the brakes go on. I said, oh, bring up your controls and hit the invert axis and it'll basically make it so that they work like regular rudder, rudder pedals and stuff. So, the next thing I want to show you, let's go over to the FA-18, and let's go to Sim. And on that one, we're going to hit Axis Commands also. We're going to go down to, uh, where is Joy Y? Joy Y is the pitch. And we're going to go to uh, Axis Tune. And you can see in the FA-18, I have 7 and 10. See, it's a little different. The dead zone of 3 in the Viper. I've got it of 7 and 10. So that's what I'm using currently in the Hornet. Uh, and again, that's I haven't touched the Hornet in a long time. I've flown it a couple of times in the last month. But uh, since the Viper came out, I've been working with it. Uh, and if I go down here to my roll trim, it's probably going to be about the same. Uh, that one is actually 8 and 10. And you can customize that. Remember, they don't have to match. But, you know, in the Viper, I had a matching curves, which was pretty good. Going down to the rudder, uh, 
tune in the axis there, uh, you can see that it's pretty much set like that. 3 and 0 on the rudder on the 18. Or rudder on the 18 is a little bit more forgiving, I notice, and everything. Plus, I love having a zero curvature on the... Uh, on the rudder. Now I mentioned what the dead zone does, but the curvature is a little different. What the curvature does is it puts a little bit of a slack curve into the input of that control so that as you engage that control it gradually picks up and then goes to full deflection. Uh, if you've got it on zero then it's going to be proportionate gradual to the uh, input of the device. Whereas if you have it set with a little bit of curvature in there it'll actually ease into the deflection on the control if you're doing uh, positive or negative pull or uh, left or right roll and that's what that does and so you'll want to give it a little bit of positive numbers to, if it's too sensitive on certain types of flight, flight controls whether it be pitch yaw or row, uh, roll you'll want to give it a little bit of each uh, to start with and then take it off as you need you know as you find you don't need it and I, what I recommend people to do if they're seasoned pilots is to fly at zero zero first and see where you need to do it you'll you'll see where you're having a hard time uh, like Tyro was yesterday he uh, he had zero on his curvature and zero on his dead zone and he was bobbing up and down and couldn't stay connected to the tanker uh, we didn't really notice we didn't really do anything until we broke off the tanker and we were flying back in formation and I looked over and I noticed he was still porpoising trying to stay in, with me in formation and so we paused it in midair and had him go and set what I had uh, and he is a seasoned pilot and has a, a lot of DCS modules so I, I knew that his skill was not lacking I think it was just because the Viper was still kind of new to him I think he hadn't taken the time to set any dead zone and curves on there and some guys don't uh, if you've got a Warthog stick or a Verpal or a VKB or some other uh, some other flight controller on an extension you may not need it uh, uh, a dead zone or curve because you have that extra arm uh, in the uh, pivot point from the gimbal all the way up to your control hand uh, and again that's going to be something that's going to be different if you've got a buddy that's got really good flight control settings uh, if he has an extension and you don't uh, the settings aren't going to work for you. You've got to make the settings work for the length and the physics of what you have and everything. So let's go back to let's cancel this and let's go look at the UH-1 the UH-1H and let's go for real well oh, that's the T-51 UH-1 sim and then we'll go to axis commands and see what we got in there okay so flight control collective and I've got 3 and 10 on that and that's for the collective. The collective in a helicopter is the stick you pull up to apply torque on the main rotors. That's what puts the twist in through the swash plate. And then if you go over here to your cyclic pitch, remember the cyclic is one stick that works just like a flight stick and it does your your pitch and, and roll. So if you go to pitch and axis tune right there, I probably probably have the same. Yep, 3 and 10. And I bet I have about the same for the roll axis. I may have something different for that. But let's see. Nope, same. 3 and 10. And uh, and then the f rudder control, flight rudder control, which is your anti-torque rudder, ro uh, rotor. Uh, you know, helicopters don't have rudders. They have, uh, it should say, anti-torque pedals and anti-torque prop propeller. Uh, but they don't have rudders. Uh, a lot of airplanes do have a fixed tail. A lot of helicopters do have a fixed tail with a trim tab on it for forward flight. But... Uh, the proper terminology is anti-torque rudder or uh, rotor and so what it is is uh, I've got that set up and I have that set with zero I basically have zero on that I might add a little bit let's add a let's add a dead zone of two and let's add a curvature of about four maybe five let's do five I like I like even numbers like two and you know increments of five and increments of two I do that with my sound on my TV can you can you tell I'm OCD I bet you are too. And we'll save that. Now, there's a lot of different stuff. Uh, if you go back, let's look at the TF-51D for real. And we'll go Axis Commands. You'll see, let's look at the rudder. The rudder is usually one that's kind of unique. So I've got 3 and 7. And the spread of that doesn't really mean anything mathematically. It's just a matter of how much control you want into the setting with the earliest part, part of the deflection from neutral. The um, one of the things one of the things I wanted to show you was my setting on the F-18 for my throttle. 
um, what I did is I had to set up custom curves with the uh, help of my buddy Thrud from Australia. Thrud, uh, if you've got any question, T H R U D is his name, and I can hook you up with him. If you've got any question about Lua editing and stuff like that, he seems to know a little bit about that and helps me out with it and everything. So again, we're going access commands, and let's go to the throttle. Uh, for my throttle control, throttle designator horizontal axis, thrust left and right. There we go. And I have both of these set the same uh, and everything, but the axis tune. Now this one is a custom, so you would basically if you're going to use a custom curve, I call this the bow curve, it looks like a recurve bow, uh, but you leave the dead zone and the curvature zero. Uh, we took the saturation X down two points to 98. And then we and click slider and user curve, which means it gave us a defined user curve. And then you come in and you can put all these different pressure points to change that curve and make it customize. Uh, and uh, if you want to pause the video and take a, if you're looking for uh, user curves for your throttle, uh, for the Warthog, for the F-18, this works out good. It takes me just to the edge of afterburner at the stops. Uh, I have the file down, file down, uh, afterburner detent. I filed it down myself. I've got a spare one and a buddy printed out for me. Uh, but that is what I use. I go from 0 to 100 in that spread right there. And so if you get it, if you want to try this out, do it for both engines and give it a try and you'll notice uh, the, the, the throttle is the one thing on the Warthog Hotas that is challenging for the F-18 right out of the box. And everybody's got to set it differently. Uh, you don't get the right amount of field of operation with that if you go default. Uh, at least that's been the experience of me and most of my friends and stuff. So I don't think there's anything else to add in there. Uh, again, go over and check out my video about the FOV settings. That's a big thing about air refueling is the sight picture. Another thing that Tyro is having problems with is he's still using the CV-1, which is the you know first generation uh, Oculus headset and the uh, VR is different in DCS. Your visual acuity is different on being able to pick up things farther away, uh, especially the older system that you have. And the other thing is, is uh, the sight picture is a lot different. And so you've got to tune that sight picture. Uh, the default settings that ED gives you on the fighters is not that great. So uh, go over and check out the FOV and Zoom video if you get a chance. And uh, also uh, check out the video for February's uh, fighter pilot mustache challenge that I have out for everybody um, you know post a link in the comments at the end of February for that video and I'll actually do another updated video on that when I post mine for, for my mustache uh, all of you saw today in my my video that I cl had a clean shaven no mustache and we'll go uh, 29 days and let's see how it is let's do it March 1st we'll do the video on March 1st showing my mustache and in that video everybody can post pictures of their uh, of their mustaches and stuff. And I'll probably put a post up in the forums for February uh, Fighter Pilot Mustache Challenge. Uh, and also check out the uh, check out the DCS Debrief. Tyro from uh, England has some really good BFM videos, instructional videos. Uh, he's going to be training me a lot so that we'll be on the same sheet uh, when we do some of our coordinated training videos and stuff. Uh, like, subscribe if you like. Uh, also, uh, if you want to do some one-on-one -on -one training, I've got a lot of time during the day, and uh, you know I do a lot of things away from the PC during the day, but I pretty much work from home, so I've got some time to do some one-on-one -on -one training if you uh, need some help with anything, carrier landings, air refueling, anything simple like that. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Everybody be safe. Have a good weekend. Cheers.